Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. Hopefully you're learning a lot of cool things in section two. If you are, hit the like button below and you can follow me on Twitter in the description below. Also, if you can, please share out these videos and retweet as I really don't do any promotion and it helps me out a lot. So let's get into it. In this video, we're gonna do some really, really cool things. We're gonna fork our own version of the mainnet that we can use our local dev environment to communicate to with local dev ether that will allow us to run complex attacks and really beat up on everything in our penetration testing without worrying about the repercussions of getting in trouble for hacking things on the mainnet. So hopefully this sounds cool to you. In the last video, we took a look at the console and we interacted with our own contract and we hacked around on that. We're gonna utilize all those skill sets in this video to hack around on mainnet contracts and get a feeling for how this mainnet fork stuff works. If that sounds good to you, like, subscribe, and share this out and let's get rolling. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to export our Infura project ID so that we can grab that snapshot of mainnet that we're going to fork. So we can do that by doing this right here. I'm gonna paste this in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna export our Infura project ID with export web3 underscore Infura underscore project underscore ID equals, and then grab that URL out of your Infura account for the project you created and paste it in there. Once you do that, we can run Brownie console, but this time we're gonna use the network and we're gonna do the main net fork. So we can say Brownie console minus minus network, and we'll do main net dash fork. Now we'll give that a minute to run. I'm gonna hit pause. So once that completes, you'll see that your mainnet and Fura ID contacted chain ID one and that your Brownie environment is ready to use the fork of the mainnet so you can communicate with mainnet contracts locally in your dev environment with your dev Ethereum, which is really, really awesome. So what do we wanna do with this? Well, let's hit up the CryptoKitties contract because everybody knows this one. So these are a bunch of CryptoKitties that are for sale and these are their IDs. So we can use those IDs to communicate with them. You can grab the CryptoKitties contract right on Etherscan as usual. I'll leave the link in the description below. I'm gonna copy this cause we're gonna need it in a little bit. And we're gonna to go to contract down here and we're gonna to go to read contract. And if we scroll down, there's a lot of stuff we can do here like pregnant kitties is pregnant. Um, we can check out get kitty, which will grab a kitty with the ID. So let's do that. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need to grab the address, which we copied already. So we'll say address equals, and we'll put that in quotes. Let me paste that. That is the address for CryptoKitties. And we're gonna give a variable of CK for CryptoKitties. And we're gonna say equals contract dot from underscore explorer. And then we'll put our address in here. Now we can use that CK in order to communicate with that contract. Now you're gonna get an error here and it's based on a target compiler of like 0.4.18, but that's okay. You know, when you're interacting with things on the main net, there's gonna be all kinds of different versions. You're gonna deal with pretty much every version as you go through all your learning processes. In this case, we're communicating with a 0.4.18 contract, which, We'll not have all the features within Brownie and we might not be able to do any debugging, but since we're not doing any debugging, really doesn't matter, we will just move forward. So let's take our CK variable and communicate with that get kitty. So we can say CK dot get kitty. And you'll also notice that we do not have to you know, use the ABI here. It's grabbing all that stuff for us and we can just call the contracts with that variable we created. So let's grab a kitty ID. So if we go back to our crypto kitties here, I'm gonna click this and we're just going to grab this number. I'm gonna hit copy and let's paste this in here and we should be able to call this and get some data back. 
And we did, here's the data, false, true, 13, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what is all of that? Well, we can just look at the contract and you know you can scroll through here and find the get kitty within the contract right here in the code. Or I just opened it up on a GitHub here so we can search here pretty easy, get kitty. And what you'll see here is we call get kitty with our ID, which is what we did. And we get back, you know, is stating, is ready. That's what that true and the false was. And then here's what those numbers are here. Birth time, matron ID. So this is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the sixth one is the birth time. Let's see what our birth time is. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is our birth time. I'm not sure what format that is but I'm sure you can look it up in the spec and find out how it's calculating that and then figure out the actual birth time from that, parse it out, and you could probably, you know, toss in a whole bunch of IDs and find out, you know, which one's the oldest or which one's, you know, the, the newest, et cetera, whatever it is that you're trying to do. But the whole point here is that we just interacted with a smart contract on the main net via our local dev environment. So that is really, really, really cool. So let's call another function here. We can say ck dot is pregnant. Let's find out if our, you know, kitty here is pregnant. And our kitty is not pregnant. So uh, that's too bad, I guess. But let's play around with something else now. Let's look at a wallet. And let's show that even though we're not on the main net, we can interact with it like it's the main net. So let's send a balance from our accounts. Accounts, and we can look at zero again, just like in the last one, and we'll say dot balance. And we have that balance there, right? It's like a 100 Ethereum. Now, how can we use that and then update a real address on main net, but locally? So let's look at some addresses here. So we'll grab an address. Let's see. I'm just going to hit the home button and we'll grab a regular address, right? So we want to do a, just going to click this transaction here and let's find somebody. Uh, we're gonna, this is sending this to, is this a contract? I don't believe so. So this person has, looks like um, 19,000 Ethereum, whatever. Let's check their balance and then let's send them some fake ether and then update their balance on our main net fork, right? So we can see that we're using our local Ethereum to interact with you know, the state of the blockchain when we forked it. So this will give you a lot of ideas about you know, what you can do with these smart contracts once you fork this for your testing. And that's kind of the idea of this video, really get your brain churning on the types of things that you can do. So I'm gonna paste this in here. Here's what we're going to say. We're going to say our wallet balance equals web3.eth.getbalance. You know this. We've done this a lot of times. And then we're going to do a web checksum address, which fixes the address if we screwed something up. And we're just going to toss our address in here. So I'm going to kill this off. I'm going to pop this in here. I'm going to see what this address is. Okay, so let's take a look. Now we are going to print that out and we're going to look at it in Ether. So Let's say web three dot from way. And we want to look at our wallet balance. And we want to put that as ether. So that way it's a little more understandable and we can see the difference really quickly. Okay, so this is our wallet balance, 9,927. So now let's send some ether to that address. So I'm gonna paste this in here. Okay, so we're gonna say TX for our transaction, accounts zero, which is our ganache account. And we're gonna to transfer to an address and we're gonna transfer 50 Ethereum. So I'm gonna paste that in there again. So now we have that transfer. And of course we can say, you know, tx.info get a little bit of information on that. So we see here our transaction hash. We did it from our local ganache to that address that we were sending it to on the blockchain. And we did this value of 50 ether and it was done in this block right here. So once that's done, if we look at the balance again, 
it should be a brand new balance with an extra 50. So let's grab our wallet balance here and then let's print that out. Okay, so we got 9977 and then up here we had 9927. So two uh, plus five, six, seven. So that is correct. We actually increased the balance on our main net fork of a wallet that is not ours, right? It's not our local dev. It's part of the fork on the Ethereum mainnet that we're running local here. And we're able to update that from 27 to 77 with our fake ether. So if you think about this now, you could fork the mainnet. You can play around with a contract you're trying to hack and try a whole bunch of stuff and interact with things. You can't mess anything up and you have your local Ethereum to play around and really have a learning environment. So hopefully this has your brain churning and you know really getting you going. If you learn something, you know, please give me a like and subscribe and share this out. I really appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter in the link below and I will catch you in the next video.